who am I? It's a very difficult area to get inside. What I'll do is I'll talk about dreams and how do we achieve dreams. Now we all dream, right? So it's one sec, let me just figure this out. This goes to the next one. Fantastic. So this is what the definition of dream is. And what they say is, uh, you know, it has certain stages of sleep experience and emotions. For me, I used to dream during daytime. And I'm sure a lot of you will agree with this. Particularly lecture time, interesting lecture after day. Uh, they can do dream. And my dream started when I was around nine years old. And I used to get punished a lot in school. And our school had this huge field. So I still remember after lunch, we used to have this stiffened break. And I used to be punished and I used to stand outside and look at these eagles. And there were eagles in our school. And they used to come down, swoop down, eat all the crumbs that was left behind. And my first dream was to fly. My parents got into trouble because I, my mother tells me that I went home, I desperately wanted to fly. And my parents couldn't really satisfy me. So I'm like, I want to fly, why can't I fly? So that's how my dreaming started happening. And pretty early on, I, you know, Richard Bach, a lot of that happened. Uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, and I was so certain that I am Jonathan, you know. <laughs> it's uncertain, there's no doubt about it. So that kind of helped me to dream and look beyond the obvious. So I was born in Calcutta. Uh, theatre, what happens is my family is from a theatre background. So my parents are into theatre. My grandfather uh, was a theatre person. He had his own troupe, which I joined in uh, when I was in class 10. So I must be 15 years old. So that you know happened by default. So it was there. I all through my college, my school, I was into theatre. But then I was not really satisfied. So I went in search of something more. And Calcutta at that time didn't provide me with a lot of opportunities. So I came to Delhi and I stumbled upon experiential education. So that's something interesting. We used to take children out to the hills and teach children life skills through outdoor education. So make them climb rocks and compare the rock like a metaphor to life's challenges and how do you, you know, overcome obstacles. So a lot of that started there. Then I moved up the value chain and started teaching adults because pretty much the same stuff that we were doing with young adults, we thought why can't we do this with adults. So then got into the training space, was facilitating a lot of groups, started training then moved out in 2004 to the space that is a coaching space. So I am an executive coach now. Uh, believe me, it's a little difficult to understand. When I first told my mom in 2009, mom, I'm an executive coach now. So I just finished my ICF, that's the International Coach Federation. So there I was, and my mom was like, so what do you do? So I said, you know, I help people achieve their dreams. And mom looked at me with a huge concern and said, Vita, you're not doing anything illegal, right? <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> so it's pretty difficult. So what does a coach do? So a coach basically helps somebody, a coachee or a client, as we call it, to achieve his or her dreams. Whatever those dreams may be, take action on those steps. And just helps and supports them on the way. Sounds very true to be, you know, with like, and you get paid for that? Dude, that's like, awesome, man. <laughs> So yes, so that is what I do, but I'm not here to talk about coaching. So that is professionally what I do, I love doing that. But what I want to talk about is three lessons that I learned in my journey to dream. From Calcutta to where I am now, in my journey, these are three lessons that I learned. So to start with, I'll give you a thing to do. What do you see? Sorry, everything adds up to 11. Fantastic. Third one is wrong. Sorry? Third one is wrong. Third one is wrong. 7 plus 5 is equal to 11. Thank you so much. So some people saw everything adds up to 11, and some people saw 7 plus 5 is equal to 11. So that's the first lesson I learned, you know, when I was growing up. In life, not everything is perfect. There are things that will go well, and there are things that will not go well. So if you look at this, out of five, four were correct. But our mind 
if I connect to what Rajesh was also talking about, it directly goes to that which is wrong. And we are trained, there's nothing wrong in it, we are trained like that. Think about your childhood, you got 8 out of 10 in maths, you come home and your father says, ah, do number kaan hai? <laughs> You are always confident, ah, Manish from your neighbor's kid has done better than you, how much did Manish get? <laughs> so all the time, we are fighting, till now if you look at you, you have been, and it's a competitive point. You have to come first, you get 90, the other guy gets 93, you are not good enough. So all the time we are looking at what is not working. As a consultant, I get paid to do that. What is not working, fix it. But in life, what I have learned and what I have seen is if I focus on that which is not working, because the funda says, Whatever you focus on, it magnifies. Has it happened with any of you, you buy a new cell phone and suddenly in the next few days you see a lot of people carrying that cell phone. Yeah. Or like a car. You buy a new car and say, yeah, something can be What's wrong, dude? You know, so that happens. So whatever you focus on, it magnifies. But why we don't do anything about it is, let's say I am walking and there is a pebble in my shoe. And there's this beautiful scenery there. Now, I am not really looking at the scenery, but I'm concentrating on that pebble which is creating a problem in my leg. But what happens is, it is too painful, because logic will tell you, stop, take out your shoe, take the pebble out, walk again. But in life, if you look at it, to stop means to, you have, you have an inertia. And to stop means to, you know, just put a full stop there, and maybe pause for a few days, few months, and that is very difficult for a lot of us. So we complain about it. What has worked for me is, if I can do anything about it, I will do about it. If I cannot, I will ignore it. Let it be. Let me focus on the 80% that is working. If you look at this, you will see the Pareto 80-20 principle. So the first lesson that I learned is focus on the positive core. There is a positive core in all of us. There are things that we do really well. There are things that we are not very good at. Definitely improve on your weakness. But play on your strengths. If you know what your strengths are, can you play on it? Can you leverage it? Because you are unique. And whatever your strengths are, find them, nurture them. Definitely weakness, you know, take care of it. But we don't get so much time. If you look at all leaders from the business part, if you look at Steve Jobs, he had his own idiosyncrasies. He leveraged on his strength. He was not perfect. Nobody is perfect. But can I leverage on my strength? So that is the first lesson that I want to talk to you about. Focus on the positive core. The second lesson that I want to talk about is, again, this connects very well with the first, where we talked about the mind and the range of the senses. So, I'll very briefly touch upon this, is what I found is my feelings are not really the result of what is happening, but it is my interpretation of what is happening outside. I'll demonstrate this. So what they say is, I'll just briefly familiarize you with the model for an iceberg model. So what they say is, imagine this is an iceberg. I haven't seen an iceberg with my real eyes, but what I've heard is, how much of it is up? 10 percent, 10 percent, and 90 down, or one seventh. So maximum amount of it is under the water, right? And a very small part is above the water. So they say every human being is like an iceberg. You can only see a small part of it that is visible to you. The rest of it you cannot see. But based on what you see, we make assumptions. We all make assumptions. You have seen me probably for the last 20 minutes now. We have already started making an assumption who I am based on what was told, what I am telling you, and your assumption by looking at it. And we are always doing this with everybody. You try to put them in a box. Again, there is nothing wrong in it. If everybody is unique and we have to subcategorize it, it would have been very difficult. And we do that, right? So what I'm saying is if this is the behavior we can see, of any human being, where does this behavior come from? So let's say I am crying. Why am I crying? <coughs> what will be the underlying reason for my emotional crying? Why will I cry? Any ideas back there? Yes? 
Upset? What is upset? You are bang on. Emotion? So immediately your behavior is triggered by a feeling and an emotion. I am crying, maybe because I am upset. I am crying, maybe because I am happy. I just want a 10 crore lottery. So I am damn happy about it. Right? So behavior is triggered by feelings and emotions. Now let's say, take the example of crying. So crying and I am upset. Why am I upset? Because of the result. Because of result? Failure? <laughs> yes. It means uh, you have not achieved your goal. I have not achieved my goal. Yes. And what I believe my goal is that I have not achieved. So what this say is my feelings and emotions come from my belief. I'll give you an example. Let's say we were coming by car, my wife and I, today in the morning. And we saw a dead dog on the road. Okay. Now, I saw it, I felt really upset and then we started talking about a dog we had called Tipsy that died long time back. And we were generally emotional. We were not like crying, but we were sad. But at the same time, my driver is totally nonchalant about it. No reaction. Same incident, two people, two different set of behavior. Right? So the point is, my belief was a dead dog is sad. For him, it's a probably everyday affair. He kills a dog every one week. Who knows? <laughs> so for him, that will create a different set of beliefs. So my belief is this is bad. This is sad. That triggers my emotions. That triggers my behavior. And my belief comes from something which is very, very deep down. That is called values. Bad news and good news. Bad news is I can't change my values. They are fixed. When you were 3 to 11 years old, your values got fixed. As you enter the professional field, you will be doing a lot of psychometric tests, MBTI, Fastnet 5, you know, a lot of big, big names. And pretty much they will tell you what your core is, what your core values are. And you cannot change them. That's the sad news. The good news is you can change your beliefs. And this is formed very early on. Like I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was growing up in Calcutta, we had a lot of these festivals. And uh, during Durga Puja, food used to come to our house. So as I was growing up, I saw neighbors bringing in food in a plate, in a house. And my mother's rule was, whatever food comes to our house, that plate should not go empty. It should go out with more food than what has come in. So as I was growing up, that became my value system. And how it manifested is, I should give more than what I receive. Now that became one of my behavior. And if you look down, it comes from there. A lot of our belief, if you are growing up, you have a brother and a sister, and you are always being compared to the other person. So when I was coaching, I will not tell the name of the client, but I have this issue down. She was pushing herself too much. She was pushing, 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 pushing. And we couldn't find out why she was doing that. And then when we looked down, we found out that when she was growing up, she had a sister. And all the time she had to prove to get love and affection from her parents that I am better than her or I am good enough. She was always being compared. I have grown up now. Maybe the situation has changed, but still I am pushing because every situation becomes a competition. My sister is no more there with me right now, but it is in my head now. My belief is there. Okay, I have to push. I have to do this. So what we're trying to say is when you go through life, challenge your beliefs. Now beliefs are not good or bad. Beliefs are either limiting or empowering. Sajid Tendulkar goes into the field, what does he do? Which leg does he put first when he enters the stadium? Right. So that is the belief that he has. A lot of us will have lucky shirts, lucky vests, <laughs> or lucky charms that we have. That's a belief that you have. I know people who do not wear a certain color on certain days. Now that is helping them. No point in changing it. So if your belief is helping you, do not change it. But a lot of time your belief can be stopping you from reaching your goal. 
I'll give you another example. When I started working in 99, I was working under an Australian company. I was working with Oberoi's. I was the sales manager there. And in Oberoi's, my boss was a six feet five inch guy. Okay, he's huge. Okay, <laughs> he had a cell phone that was at that time used to have Motorola. You would kill a man with that cell phone. It was like so big. And that used to look like this in his hand. <laughs> like a huge guy. And initially what happened was I couldn't look face to face. I mean, it's not possible to look face to face. I would have to look here. But I had problems with authority. And that was stopping me from my career growth. And then when I looked back and I tried to understand why is this happening? And then I understood my cultural upbringing from a middle class background is you do not question authority. When your mother tells you to do it, do it. You don't question why should I do it or your teachers. When I talk to an elder, I will not look eye to eye. I will keep my head down. That is a sign of respect. That is what I was told. That is what I was born with. But now in my career, if I do that with this guy, he thinks I'm not confident. I'm doing the same behavior because of my belief. But for this guy, he doesn't understand that. He will just look at my behavior and judge. Ajay, but that confident. And that was stopping me. So the point that I'm trying to make is challenge your beliefs. And what also is a cause of belief is a lot of time, whatever you do five or six times, it becomes a habit. Can you all sit like this? Fantastic. Which hand comes on top? Left or right? Now can you just do the opposite? How does it feel? Uncomfortable. You can do it, but it's uncomfortable. And what they say is, this is a very low stake activity. Nothing changes in your life if you put left on top or right on top. The first time you did this, it has become a pattern. If you do it five times, it becomes a pattern. It's like wearing a trousers. All of you are wearing trousers. Some of you are wearing sari. People who are wearing trousers, which leg do you put in first? Left or right? How many of you say, I don't remember? <laughs> so if you notice, there will be a pattern. And your mind will come up with logic. Ah, my left leg is strong. That's why I put my left leg in. <laughs> but if you really notice, there is no logic. It's just a pattern. And it's so quick to get into this pattern. If you just do something, like, let me give you an example. Um, I'll give you a word. You have to repeat that word after me. And then I'll ask you a question. You have to answer immediately. Don't intellectualize it. Just answer. Uh, the word for you will be silk. S I L K. Silk ka sari. Silk. One. Silk. Can't hear you. One. Silk. Two. Silk. Three. Silk. Four. Silk. Five. Silk. Six. Silk. What do cows drink? Milk. 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 What do cows drink? Cows generally drink water from where I come from. This is to know. I don't know. Jews can understand. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's called conditioning. Now, don't be sad, it happens with all of us. But the point is uh, the point that I'm trying to make is a lot of time in life. We might have set up these patterns that we have. Instinctively, when something happens, I behave in a certain way. It's not because I'm thinking through it, but it's because of a pattern that is happening. Do you agree with me? Right? So a lot of time, there's a pattern that we follow. And it's so quick and easy to set a pattern. You just repeated the word silk five times. So cow, drink. Just because you said silk, automatically in your mind it will come milk. It's that easy to fall into that trap. I mean, branding, advertisement knows it. That's what they're doing. In the morning you wake up, you take a child. He just had lunch, you go out, he sees a McDonald's sign, automatically that child is hungry. Right? A child now is thirsty, he won't say water, he'll say Coca-Cola. Why? So, so you get those messages in. 
so that it's instinctive. You react immediately. So my other request, beware of your beliefs. Be aware of it. Changing is very difficult. Because people do a lot more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure. You will not go to a doctor when you are fit. You will go only when you are in pain. Right? So a lot of time our behavior is also triggered by that. So before I move on, do you want to do another one? <laughs> huh? Okay, I'll give you another one. But you have to answer immediately. No intellectualizing. So the word for you is spot. S P O T. Dabba hota hai. Spot. One. Four. Two. Four. Three. Four. 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 Five. Four. What do you do when you come to a green light? What do you do when you come to a green light? You can try this out. There's another one. <laughs> we don't have time for that. <laughs> so that was the second lesson that I learned. The third thing that I stumbled upon through my journey was this very interesting fact that knowledge is not power. A lot of time in our quest for our dreams, whatever dream that you have, after five years where you want to be, after six years where you want to be, I have compromised on my dream. I wanted to do certain things. As a trainer, when I first, in 2004, I kind of realized this is my calling, this is what I want to do. But being a freelancer scared the shit out of me. And I didn't have it in me to leave my job. So I had a 9 to 5 job. At that point of time, I was with Corpus. It's a picture stock agency. I'm a photographer. I mean, I used to be at that time. So I had that security of that paycheck coming. You know, second of the month at paycheck coming was a huge deal for me. So even when I dreamt I want to be that trainer, but being a freelance trainer was very, very scary for me. So the thing is knowledge, you might know what you want to do, is not power. Knowledge plus action is power. Can you take action on that? Whatever dream you have, can you take one step today? That will help you. And nobody is going to really come up from above and say, you know, give it to you. You have to work for it. Luck is there, but you have to work for it. Are you willing to make that sacrifice? In the corporate world, we talk about work-life balance. But I truly believe there is no work-life balance. You cannot be the best CEO and also a good father. It just cannot happen, two together. You have to choose. If I want to do this, probably I have to compromise on something else. I can't be good at three things. I mean, normal people cannot. You have to compromise. So the third thing and the last thing that I want to talk to you about is knowledge is not power. Whatever you're going to read about, talk about, just Google it, you will find anything. Right? Previously, 20 years back, people had knowledge, they won't give, they won't share. Don't see Chavay. What notebook that I'm using, I will not tell you. Today, there is no copyright. Everything is available, right? But can I take action on this? Can I take action on that knowledge? That will help me. So I'll end the talk with this. I will request you all to just be aware of your beliefs. What are the belief system that you carry? And you can change it if you want. And just think whether those belief systems that you're carrying are helping you right now or not. If it is helping you, awesome. Don't change it. If it is not helping you, think about it. Because changing will take time. Once you are aware of it, it can change. You know? So thank you all. It was nice to meet you.